Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Depending on where you are in this world, God bless you. This is Gloria White coming to you from Utah, USA. Today we're going to be continuing in the book of Mark in the New Testament, in the King James Version of the Holy Bible. And we are in chapter 5. And they came over the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him, out of the tombs a man of an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had often bound with feathers and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the feathers broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. And when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him, and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God, that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. And the unseats unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine and the herd ran violently down a steep slope into the sea there were about two thousand and were choked in the sea and they that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country and they went out to see what it was that was done and they then they came and they come to jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil, and had the legion, sitting and clothed, and in his right mind, and they were afraid. And they that saw it told him, told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil, and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coast. And when he was come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friends, and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee, and hath had compassion on thee. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him, and all men did marvel. And when Jesus was passed over again, by ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him, unto him, and the and he was, excuse me, and he was nigh unto the sea, and behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus, by name, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet, and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee. Come and lay hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed and thronged him. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all she had, all she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch his touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him in the press, and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, Who toucheth me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell before him and told him all the truth. 
And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace, and be whole of thy plague. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, My daughter is dead. Why troubleth thou the master any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. And he suffered no man to follow him save Peter and James and John, the brother of James. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and seeth the tumult, and them that wept and wailed greatly. And when he was come in, he saith unto them, Why make ye this ado, and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn, but when he had put them all out, he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel, and them that were with him, and entered if in where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand, and said unto her, Tayaka, no, Tala thy kumun, which is being interpreted, Damsel, I say unto thee, Arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked, for she was of the age of twelve years, and they were astonished with a great astonishment. And he charged them straightly that no man should know it, and commanded that something should be given to her to eat. Chapter 6 And he went out from thence, and came into his own country, and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, from whence hath this man these things? And what wisdom is this which he is given unto us, unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James, and Hosea, and Judah, and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. But Jesus said unto, unto them, A prophet is not without honor but in his own country, and among his own kin, and in his own house. And he could do there no, no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them, and he marveled because of their unbelief. And he went round about the villages teaching, and he called unto him the twelve, and began to send them forth by two and two and gave them power over unclean spirits, and commanded them that they should take nothing for their journey, save a staff only, no script, no bread, no money in their purse, but, he sh but be shod with sandals, and not put on two coats. And he said unto them, In what place soever ye enter into an house, there abide till ye depart from that place. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear you, when ye depart thence, shake off the dust from under your feet for a testimony against them. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. And they went out and preached that men should repent. And they cast out many devils, and anointed with oil many that were sick, and healed them. And King Herod heard of him, for his name was spread abroad, and he said, That John the Baptist was risen from the dead, and therefore mighty works do show forth themselves in him. Others said, That is Elias, and others said, That is a prophet, or as one of the prophets. But when Herod heard thereof, he said, it is John, whom I beheaded, he is risen from the dead. For Herod himself had sent forth, and laid hold upon John, and bound him in prison for Herodias' sake, his brother Philip's wife, for he had married her. For John had said unto Herod, It is not lawful for thee to have thy brother's wife. Therefore Herodias had a quarrel against him, and would have killed him, but she could not. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was a just man, and holy, and observed him. And when he heard him, he did many things, and heard him gladly. 
And when a convenient day was come, that Herod was on his birthday made a supper to his lords, high captains, and chief estates of Galilee. And when the daughter of the said Herodites came in and danced and pleased Herod and them that sat with him, the king said unto the damsel, Ask of me whatsoever thou wilt, and I will give it thee. And he sware unto her, Whatsoever thou shalt ask me, ask of me, I will give it thee unto the half of my kingdom. And she went forth and said unto her mother, What shall I ask? And she said, The head of John the Baptist. And she came in straightway with haste unto the king, and asked, saying, I will that thou give me by and by in a charger the head of John the Baptist. And the king was exceeding sorrow, sorry yet for his oath's sake, and for his sakes which sat with him. He would not reject her. And immediately the king sent an executioner, and commanded his head be brought. And he went and beheaded him in the prison, and brought his head in a charger, and gave it to the damsel, and the damsel gave it to her mother. And when his disciples heard of it, they came and took up his corpse, and laid it in a tomb. And the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus, and told him all things, both what they had done, and what they had taught. And he said unto them, Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place, and rest for a while. For there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure so much as to eat. And they departed into a desert place, and by ship privately. And the people saw them departing, and many knew him, and ran afoot thither out of all cities, and out went them, and came together unto him. And Jesus, when he came out, saw much people, and was moved with compassion toward them, because they were as sheep, not having a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And when the day was now far spent, his disciples came unto him and said, This is a desert place, and now is the time far past. Send them away, that they may go into the country round about, and into the villages, and buy themselves bread, for they have nothing to eat. He answered and said unto, unto them, Give ye them to eat. And they said unto him, Shall we go and buy two hundred penny, lo penny worth of bread, and give them to eat? He saith unto them, How many loaves have ye? Go and see. And when they knew, they said, Five and two fishes. And he commanded them to all make all sit down by companies upon the green grass. And they sat down in ranks by hundreds and by fifties. And when he had taken the five loaves and the two fishes, he looked up to heaven and blessed, and brake the loaves, and gave them to his disciples to set before them. And the two fishes divided he among them all. And they did all eat, and were filled. And they took up twelve baskets full of the fragments and of the fishes. And they that did eat of the loaves were about five thousand men. And straightway he constrained his disciples to get into the ship, and to go to the other side before unto Bethsaida, excuse me, Bethsaida, while he sent away the people. And when he had sent them away, he departed into a mountain to pray. And when Eve was come, the ship was in the midst of the sea, and he alone on the land. And he saw them tolling in the rowing, for the wind was contrary unto them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he cometh unto them, walking upon the sea and would have passed them passed and would have passed by them <laughs> but when they saw him walking on the sea they supposed it had been a spirit and cried out for they all saw him and were troubled and immediately he talked with them and saith unto them be of good cheer it is i be not afraid and he went up and unto them into the ship and the wind ceased, and they were sore amazed in themselves, beyond measure, and wondered. For they considered not the miracles of the loaves, for their heart was hardened. And when they had passed over, they came into the land of Gen Genesaret, and drew to the shore. 
And when they had come out of the ship, straightway they knew him, and ran through that whole region round about, and began to carry in beds those that were sick, that they where they had where they heard him, oh, excuse me, where they heard he was, and whithersoever he entered, into villages or cities or country, they laid the sick in the streets, and besought him that they might touch. <laughs> Oh, man, <laughs> they sought him that they might touch it, if were, but the border of his garment. And as many as touched him were made whole. <laughs> oh, my goodness, his power is even in his clothes. Oh, my goodness. You know, Peter, um, he, he was... Um, it was discovered that when whenever Peter would walk to go to work in the morning, that his shadow would fall across anyone who was sick, and they'd be healed. So they started lining up in the mornings just so that Peter's shadow would cross over them, and they would be healed. Amazing stories in our Bible. Oh, my goodness. It should be so much encouragement to each and every one of us. How much God loves us and how powerful and amazing he is. And as always, <laughs> I love you.